All right, I've seen you perform at the Atlanta Braves. Right. Uh, Turner Field. Field. Turner Field. Yeah. There you go. You had a concert there after the uh, baseball game? No, nah, we did the pregame. Oh, show, okay. And Boys to Men closed it out. Okay, got you. Yeah. And then you also did the, as you mentioned before, the Atlanta Falcons. Georgia Dome. Were those your first time performing in a... Uh, actually, it wasn't my first time performing in a dome because I've performed in the dome for uh, Battle of the Bands before. Um, but that was with me coming out doing it with a band, you know. But this last go round, there wasn't nothing else at halftime. It was Young Jock halftime, and I enjoyed every moment of it. It was great because I was able to say, "This is my city," and I'm happy that. The Falcons Association and, 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 and the Dome allowed me to come out and do that in my city, for my city, you know what I'm saying? In front of a team that I I actually rock with, you know, the Falcons and the Hawks, they own me, you know, I'm from here, I, I don't jump ship. If, if this is what I'm from, this is what I know, this is what I am. Now, was there a difference in performing for the baseball um crowd and, and versus the football crowd to you or was it the same? Well, it was a little different because how they had it. They had me set up in f in the front when you walk into the stadium. It's like this, this big open area. So you, you got to go past me to walk into the stadium. The the thing that was different about Turner Field, was it, it was more intimate. You know what I'm saying? Because the people were right there. It was just like, it was probably, I mean, for that, in that holding space, it was probably about 4,000 people if, at standing still, but because the crowd is constantly going by, you still, I was out there for 45 minutes. A 45 minute show with a constant crowd where it's always packed, even though the people are continuously going in as people are sitting there as well. So we still may have did that in front of 30,000 people within those 45 minutes of people coming into the stadium, you know what I'm saying? Uh, so that was the difference. It was intimate. The dome, you can't see no faces. You just hear people. You just see the lights and the smoke. And I've got down 50 chilliters in front of me. You know what I'm saying? Because even at the Braves field, I had about 15 dancers. And they gave me an actual drum line. You know what I'm saying? So that shit was real cool. They gave me the drum line. And I just was like, yeah, like I'm the man right now. You know what I'm saying? I felt like the man because I had a, a fun, interactive show. And when you got people from all walks, walks of life sitting there just like, oh my God, young jock, look at this. And they can show you their phone, they show you where they got your record, they can show you where they at home, where they family singing your songs, whether the old ones or the latest ones, you know what I'm saying? Or it's like, hey man, you might not, you might not remember me, but I was in Iraq and you came over and you took pictures and you're like, damn. Like, it's a, it's a very fulfilling uh, moment, you know what I'm saying? When you sitting there and you realize, especially if you're humble, like, the smallest things, I mean, make my day. You know what I'm saying? So to be able to be in front of a crowd in my city and people walking up to me, whether they black, white, Hispanic, Puerto Rican, Asian, I don't care. Like, they know who I am and they're like, man, I rock with you. I New Jock City or Hustle Numbers or I love buy you a drink or I, I, I love the, the song you just did with, uh, 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 I love Zoom you did with Boosie. It's crazy, you know? When you sit there, you're like, damn, and you looking at somebody with a, a button down shirt on and his hair is combed over a certain way and he just don't look like he listen to rap, but he know who you, who you are. That's a beautiful feeling, man. Now give me some do's and don'ts for someone in your shoes that's about to perform for the first time at like a baseball stadium or a football stadium. Do's and don'ts. Yeah, that might be different than, let's say, performing at a nightclub. I or, mean, for know. one, you know, you can't cut, you can't curse. You have to always constantly be aware that it's a family-oriented situation. So you gotta always be careful, even if there are a lot of women and they're very flirty women, uh, you still have to use a filter. You gotta know that there's a filter, you know, because sometimes women will make you feel a certain way and you might let something come out your mouth. Whether it's just you talking a little shit to them or you gotta, you gotta tone it down. You know, you definitely don't wanna be offensive in a situation like that. Um, 
I definitely think that whenever you are doing something that big and that l on a large scale, you have to incorporate what they know. You have to. I mean, meaning like, if you stand in front of a crowd, you got to know your crowd. It's just like doing demographics. You know what I'm saying? Like, if I stand in front of a crowd and it's a it's a predominantly white crowd, I have to relate. You know what I'm saying? I may not be able to relate to them. Talk about no gas, no cush. No goddamn dirty sprite, you know what I'm saying? They, they might be like, whoa, like what? Like it's funny, I go in front of a crowd, like I do these colleges, and if it's like a predominantly white crowd, like let's say the colleges, I always take that uh, future. I'm on that good, 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 good crowd, right? So because it's for the white folks, I just switch it up, and I might say some shit like, I'm on a Miller light and Adderall. <laughs> and they go fucking crazy because they love Adderall. Now, I'm not saying they as in white people, but when I speak of college kids who, who have to take something to kind of keep them up for studying when they cramming and shit. But they love it because they hadn't thought of that, but they definitely know that song, right? But now you've given them a whole nother interaction for that song, you know what I'm saying? I just try to do that. You know, it's just as far as, you know, knowing, knowing your crowd, man, that's, I think that's important. So whenever you're doing large scale things, you gotta always think there are corporate sponsors in place. So you don't wanna go in there talking about nobody's shit, you know, you know, you know what I'm saying? It's just it's, it's certain do's and don'ts. I mean, me personally, I think I'm a well-rounded entertainer. So I tell jokes, I bring kids on stage, and whenever, like, I'm dealing with, like, if there are women in the crowd, I do not pull the baddest woman on the stage. I go get the fattest woman I can find. I go get a big old girl. And I freak her ass down, and everybody goes crazy because they're like, oh, my God, what? I can't believe he, I, what? Uh, how does she get up there? Why, what? The? But it make people love you because they know that you're not caught up in the vanity of certain things. You know what I'm saying? It's just... I have fun. I just try to keep it down as if as possible.